This is the new 15-inch MacBook Air, Apple's largest MacBook Air ever made. And since there's only a $200 difference between the 13-inch and the 15-inch, or even just $80 if you expect them both the same, should you go for the 13-inch or the 15-inch? Is the 15-inch offering you anything more other than just a larger screen? We'll take a look at all the design differences, display differences, speakers, internals, and also do some in-depth performance testing. Starting off with the design, let's take a look at the footprint. How much larger is the 15-inch compared to the 13-inch MacBook Air? And as you can probably tell, yes, the 15-inch is considerably wider and also uh, quite a bit taller. So definitely won't be as portable as 13 inch. So what about the weight? How much heavier is the 15 inch compared to a 13? Well, the 13 is 1.24 kilograms compared to 1.51 on the 15 inch. And I gotta say, holding them both together, uh, the 15 inch is definitely heavier, but not significantly heavier compared to the 13 inch. So I would say weight wise, they're both very, very portable. Now, when it comes to the thickness, the 15 inch is a tiny bit thicker compared to a 13 inch, but only by 0.02 centimeters. And looking at both side by side, I can actually tell the difference, but again, you have to be looking at both side by side and the difference is just very tiny. And one last design difference is that of course, with the 15 inch, we have more space uh, on the sides of the keyboard. And then the trackpad is also considerably larger than on the 13 inch. Although having used the trackpad of the 13 inch, I've never really had any issues with it. But one device to compare the 15 inch Air 2 is the 15 inch MacBook Pro, as this is really the closest in terms of what the Air stands for. This was a very thin laptop, but almost no ports. Uh, and it focused on portability rather than performance, which is really what the 15 inch Air is focused on as well. So if we compare the footprint, you can see that the 15 inch MacBook Pro was about one centimeter wider and um, just a tiny bit taller as well. So yes, the 15 inch Air is more compact. In terms of the weight, the 15 inch MacBook Pro weighs 1.83 kilograms compared to 1.51 on the Air. And I gotta say, uh, the weight difference is noticeable, but it's not that massive. So this thing was actually quite light. Now, when it comes to the actual thickness, on paper, there is a considerable thickness difference. 1.55 centimeters on the MacBook Pro and 1.15 on the MacBook Air. But putting those side by side, um, they actually feel the same thickness. Of course, the MacBook Pro has this tapered design where it gets thicker towards the middle and thinner towards the edges. And if we open these up, you can probably see that the Air is indeed a tiny bit thinner, but not by a lot. Although a reason for both looking the same could also be uh, the feet, which are much taller on the MacBook Air compared to the very, very shallow feet on the old 15-inch MacBook Pro. Now, when it comes to the actual displays, this is, of course, the biggest difference between the two. With a 15-inch having a 15.3-inch panel compared to the 13.6 on the 13-inch. We have a 2560 by 1664 resolution on the 13-inch compared to 2880 by 1864, which is, fun fact, the same resolution as the old 15-inch MacBook Pro, uh, just with extra 64 pixels for the notch area. Now, of course, one advantage of that extra resolution is that you also get more scaling options. So by default, the 15 inch has the same resolution, the scale resolution as the higher end upper resolution on the 13 inch. But then of course, with a 15 inch, you also get one extra option. And just opening up a web page, you can see how much more content you get on the 15 inch compared to the 13 inch. In fact, you get exactly the same amount of content as on the old 15 inch MacBook Pro. Next up, let's test out the speakers and see if the speakers on the 15 inch are that much better compared to the 13 inch, as according to Apple, these are a definite improvement. However, you need to keep in mind that the speakers are underneath the keyboard. So the sound is coming from under the display from these grills here. Okay, so realistically, the 13 inch definitely sounded the worst. And it only has a four speaker system compared to the six speaker system on the 15 inch with four canceling woofers. Now, I gotta say the difference between the 13 and the 15 inch uh, was mostly in terms of the volume and the 15 inch did have a tiny bit of bass compared to the 13 inch, which was lacking it entirely. And then the 15 inch MacBook Pro was definitely louder than the 15 inch Air, uh, but also lacked the clarity of the 15 inch Air. Oh, and if you just got a new MacBook, whether it's the new 15 inch Air or the 13 inch or even a completely different MacBook, one app that I always install myself is Setup, who are also kind enough to sponsor today's video. Setup is the best collection of apps for iOS and macOS. You'll find that the amount of services on the market can often feel like way too much. Some companies will be happy to let you get lost in endless options, and some would just say compromise. 
but often the best choice is somewhere in the middle. Setup's growing collection of more than 230 apps covers as many use cases as possible, aiding in everything that you are professionally using your device for, helping you choose the apps that suit your use case while staying affordable too. My favorite setup apps are Bartender, Session, and iStat Menus. You get a 7-day trial, and after that, it's only $9.99 a month. So be sure to check Setup out by using the link below. And now, let's get back to the testing. Okay, so I've taken both of them apart to see if there's any difference between them, and I've immediately noticed some differences. First, the two side batteries are now separated on the 15-inch into four different cells as opposed to just two cells on the 13 inch. Unclear why this is. Second, you can immediately see the beefier speakers on the 15 inch that are also in this L shape. And then the connectors for the ports go under the speakers. And third, we now have these extra metal plates on the sides, which could be there to reinforce the entire chassis. Okay, now let's talk about the actual performance differences between the 13 inch and the 15 inch. I should mention that the 15 inch comes standard with a 10 core GPU option, whereas on the 13 inch, you only get the 8 core. And if you want to get a 10 core, you have to pay $100 extra. Also, it would be interesting to see if the larger chassis of the 15 inch handles the heat better, and if in turn, we end up getting better performance. Starting off with a disk speed test, both have a 256 gigabyte SSD, and with this version, you actually get half the storage speeds of the 512 gigabyte model. If we look at the storage speed differences, it seems like they're both very similar with a 15 inch being about 130 megabytes per second faster in terms of the write speeds. And when compared to the 512 gigabyte model, as you can see, we are indeed getting about half the speeds. But okay, how would these slower speeds affect the actual file transfer? Well, here we have a folder with 17.91 gigabytes of video files, which took 27 seconds to transfer on the 15 inch MacBook Air. Now, this is really weird as this is exactly how long the 512 gigabyte model of the 13 inch took when we tested it, with a base 13 inch model taking one minute and seven seconds. However, this was at launch. And when we tested this again on Ventura, the base 13 inch took only 30 seconds. So we don't really know if Apple made some improvements to improve the transfer speeds on the base models, but yeah, at least right now, they both seem to match what a 512 gigabyte model uh, had at launch. So what about pushing both CPUs to their max? Would a 15 inch perform any better? Well, here we have Cinebench, which we're going to run three times back to back. In the first run, they both scored exactly the same, but then the 13 inch started scoring lower and lower, where in our third run, the 15 inch was 100 points ahead. And when we took a look at the temperatures, the 13 inch was running cooler, but that was because it was tuning down its clock speeds more, hence the lower scores. Next up, let's do some real world testing. Starting off with Lightroom, where we imported 228 images of various resolutions and file types, such as RAWs and TIFFs, up to 80 megapixels in size. The 15 inch took 38 seconds to import, pretty much like the 13 inch model, whereas the 512 gigabyte 13 inch did indeed take half the time because of that faster 512 gigabyte SSD. The M2 13 inch MacBook Pro with an active fan and the same specs as the 15 inch Air was seven seconds faster here. We've then applied a bunch of effects and filters to one image, pasted that onto all 227 images, and this took 1 minute and 15 seconds to apply, which was just on par with a 10 core 13 inch MacBook Air. Surprisingly, the 8 core 13 inch actually performed better here. We then exported all 228 images in full resolution, which only took 19 minutes and 11 seconds on the 15 inch. The base 13 inch took more than 30 minutes, while the high end 13 inch took close to 28 minutes. In fact, the 15 inch was really close to the 13 inch M2 MacBook Pro, which took 17 minutes. Next, we exported the same images, but compressed them to their smallest size. And here, the 15 inch took nine minutes and 25 seconds, as opposed to close to 18 minutes on the base 13 inch, or 11 minutes and 37 seconds on the high end 13 inch. However, the M2 MacBook Pro 13 inch was much faster here, taking just five minutes and 40 seconds. We then moved on to Blender and rendered the classroom scene using the Cycles CPU renderer. This took 13 minutes and 40 seconds on the 15 inch, almost a full minute less than the 13 inch model, although it was a bit slower than the 13 inch with the 10 core GPU by 10 seconds. Now, this could be due to our 10 core 13 inch model having 16 gigs of RAM as opposed to eight on the 15 inch MacBook Air. We then also tested a classroom scene, but this time using the GPU renderer, and this took five minutes and 14 seconds on the 15 inch compared to five minutes and 55 seconds on the 13 inch with the eight core GPU, 
and 5 minutes and 8 seconds on a 13 inch with a 10 core GPU and 16 gigs of RAM. And when compared to the M2 MacBook Pro with the same specs and also a cooling fan, the MacBook Pro was indeed more than one minute faster here. Now, when it comes to the timeline performance in Final Cut, even though the 15 inch has two more GPU cores, uh, the actual performance is pretty much the same. They're both extremely fluid, especially considering that this project is very demanding with a lot of um, layers and effects. Um, and this is also playing back in full quality mode. So pretty impressive on both here. We then exported this project in 4K H.264, which took 43 minutes on the 15 inch as opposed to 50 minutes and 52 seconds on the base 13 inch. So the 15 inch was 15% faster here. However, the 13 inch with a 10 core GPU and 16 gigs of RAM only took 30 minutes. Interesting enough, if we compare the 15 inch to the M2 13 inch MacBook Pro with the same specs, we pretty much get the same results. And meaning that in Final Cut Pro, the fan inside the MacBook Pro doesn't seem to do much, as exporting is mostly a bursty task. We then took this 4K H.264 video export file and converted it to ProRes using Compressor to test the ProRes media engines. The 15 inch took 1 minute and 6 seconds, 14 seconds faster than the base 13 inch MacBook Air, and 7 seconds faster than the 13 inch MacBook Pro. The 13 inch 10 core Air with 16 gigs of RAM was much faster at 51 seconds. So, RAM does play a big difference here. Then we repeated the same, but this time in 6K. And this is where we started getting some weird results, with a 15 inch taking as long as 3 minutes and 22 seconds. We then ran the test again and again, resulting in shorter and shorter rendering times, with the shortest being 2 minutes and 38 seconds. But even this was noticeably slower than the base 13 inch and the 10 core 16 gigabytes of RAM 13 inch, which took 1 minute and 35 seconds. We don't really know why this is, it could be a bug on the 15 inch, specifically when using compressor. Next up we have Logic, where we wanted to see what is the maximum amount of tracks that each machine can play. And it seems like the 15 inch maxes out at 70 tracks, which is the same amount as both versions of the 13 inch, meaning that RAM doesn't play a difference here. Moving on to some gaming, we first tested Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which is not an Apple Silicon game, as it is running through Rosetta, but it does take advantage of Apple's Metal API, so it is quite well optimized in that regard. We ran its GPU benchmark in 4K at the highest possible settings and got an average of 12 frames per second. The 13 inch base got an average of 13, interesting enough, while the 10 core uh, got 14 thanks to its 16 gigabytes of RAM. And then the 13 inch M2 MacBook Pro got 17 thanks to its active fan. And of course, that we also tested World of Warcraft, which is one of the few games that runs natively on Apple Silicon. We ran it in 2560 by 1600 resolution and with the graphics fully maxed out. The 15 inch got an average of 36.5 frames per second, with a 13 inch getting an average of 30. The 13 inch M2 MacBook Pro got an average of 41 frames per second, and this was also sustained, while the Air did drop its performance after a few minutes. Now, the 15 inch does come with a larger battery, but Apple rates it the same as the 13 inch at 18 hours, due to its bigger display also requiring more power. We left them both to play one video for one hour at max brightness from 100% battery, and the 15 inch dropped to 87%, while the 13 inch dropped to 90%. So it seems that at least when you're maxing out the brightness, the 15 inch will consume more power, despite it having a larger battery. So in conclusion, the 15 inch definitely offers you more than just a larger screen, with noticeably better speakers, better performance, and also a faster 70 watt charger. However, that performance is not necessarily sustained, because of its passive cooling, we had to run our tests multiple times, as our numbers kept getting skewed by the overheating caused by the previous tests. Apple even stated recently that the Air is aimed at bursty workloads. Still, if you spec them exactly the same, you'd only be paying $80 more for the 15 inch. In which case, I would say that it is absolutely worth it. However, you can actually get the 13 inch refurbished from Apple for just $929 which is an amazing deal. Personally, I'd still go for the 13 inch due to its increased portability, but for everyone wanting a larger MacBook, they don't have to spend 2.5K for the 16 inch anymore. Stay tuned for a comparison between the 15 inch Air and the 14 inch MacBook Pro. I'm Daniel, this is Enough Tech, and I'll see you guys in the next one. This is Enough Tech, signing out. Cheers.